Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. My guys Diddy and Dixie here. Come on little monkeys here. Love you guys. You guys know that I love these animals so much and they are so incredible. And we've been doing all kinds of training stuff with them. Of course, they see the superworms and they're going crazy. Get out of here guys. Get out of here. Get out of here. No, 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 I'm hiding them. I'm hiding them. I can't even hide them from these guys. But I've been working on something kind of cool. Obviously, we'll just give Diddy a, a little superworm. We'll give Diddy some superworms. There you guys go. There you guys go. But watch this. Come here, Diddy. No, Diddy. Get out of there, Diddy. Go, 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 go. Diddy. Oh my gosh. Ow. He bit me too. Dixie, come on. Come on. Come on. All the way up. There you go, baby girl. I've been taking, teaching her to take superworms out of my mouth. I know it's kind of gross. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's pretty cool. Come on, girl. Come on. There you go, baby girl. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a little bit outraged, it's a little bit crazy, but I love it. And uh, listen, people eat superworms all the time, so what's the difference, right? But these guys are absolutely amazing. Come on, guys. And it's always a great way to start the day with my iguanas. And I want to share with you the new trick that I had with Diddy and Dixie where they're able to eat like that. Uh, these guys are crazy. Oh, and by the way, yes, we do still use the clicker to get them back in their cage. All right, guys, come on. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. And uh, yeah, we always treat them when they get back in, but that is awesome. What do you guys say we push our problems aside and have a great day together? Guess what time it is? Blooper dig time. And you're not gonna hear that jingle hardly anymore. A couple more times maybe this year, and then all the people that hated the jingle don't have to hear it. And for those of you that love it, uh, you can continue singing throughout the winter until we get back there next time. This is actually an Abbott's Okatee that's heifer scaleless, and we're expecting that there's gonna be some probably you know so so clutches in the end here because we are the last clutches of the year so of course some of these eggs look absolutely horrible and there's a few good eggs in here it looks like actually only three four good eggs and of course all the rest are infertile, which again, I tell you guys this all the time, that when you get to the end of the breeding season, this is just pretty typical. As a matter of fact, it's rare to actually have a clutch of good eggs the last four or five clutches, to be honest with you. So we have two, four good eggs, a bunch of sluggers. Again, half these should be Abbott's Okatee scaleless, which is cool. And I think we have one more clutch to pull. Next up, we actually have a creamsicle corn that is head for scaleless, bred to the same. So we'll see what happens here. Again, second clutches typically at this time of year aren't gonna be that great. And this one certainly isn't but what a beautiful snake wow i tell you what that thing is gorgeous the good news is is that she looks really good sometimes when a colubrid lays two really good clutches they look really beat up and it's kind of hard to get them back kind of that body weight back on for hibernation or brumation so in this case she looks fantastic so we'll just go ahead pull these two eggs we'll set them there we got one slug so two eggs one slug small clutch but she looks really good she is done and ready for brumation This clutch hatched out absolutely ridiculous. This was just a normal, actually had for albino, but really just a normal ball python, but it's bred to a banana extreme gene spider. And wow, some of these things. Now this would be the extreme gene here. It's not an extremely crazy animal in itself. It's just got a little bit of blushing, a little bit of reduction, absolutely beautiful here. And then of course we have just some normal bananas that could potentially be a banana extreme gene. This one right here is definitely a banana extreme gene. Again, you can see the blushing in it and how it looks just a little bit different than this one right here. Not a whole lot. The extreme gene itself is relatively subtle to be honest with you. But then when you start mixing that extreme gene in with banana, look at that. Ooh, doggy. I tell you what, that is an unbelievable animal right there. Again, that's a banana extreme gene. And then this is also also a banana extreme gene here and again it's that really reduction of pattern that happens with the extreme gene uh, and then this would be just a normal banana spider and you start to see the difference in the kind of the size of the patterning and how you have that reduction with that extreme gene so these guys look good I love extreme gene stuff with pinstripe and spider in particular and then when you add in the banana stuff oh my goodness that is absolutely incredible so that's pretty cool this clutch is gonna be awesome and of course I'll update you when they shed because they're gonna look even better ocean and a lot of scrubbing What's going on, guys? I actually wanted to show you guys that we actually don't just strictly feed our, uh, our really cool caiman lizard, just, just uh, uh, snails. What's a great opportunity for me to show you that we actually do give him a little bit of cat food, just like our blue tongue skinks. The only exception here is we don't add any like greens or anything like that because they don't necessarily need that. However, that being said, 
I do want to make sure that I'm I, I'm giving something nutritionally sound to these guys. So let me go ahead and show you guys this. this is a, oh man, it smells actually kind of good. Can't help but and just get a really huge kick out of seeing him just like take down so much food. I mean, getting it all over himself. I mean, he's like me when I'm eating dinner. But for the most part, guys, like I really wanted to show you guys not only this, but 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 also to point out that a lot of the times when you're when you get a new animal, it's first time you get in a species and stuff like that. The biggest reason why we always push to research something first before you get it is because very often the first research and the first title, the first article you read, it's not, it's not the most informative thing that you could ever ever get. It, it's always good to have at least five sources where you get your information from, at least five. And the reason for that is because very often one, two, and three could very well just be people who have listened to somebody about 20 years ago, but we've we've learned a lot since 20 years ago. Try to talk to people who actually keep them, get as much information as you possibly can because the more you know the better you can handle situations like an animal not working not working well or eating well or doing anything like that if you're able to address that you can save that animal's life and also save, save a little bit of a hassle on your part got some more purple snakes hatching out but this clutch is great look at these guys they are so purple even more purple than the other ones and then remember what I told you that sometimes we get some that hardly have any pattern or almost purple with no pattern you can barely faintly see a little bit of the banding on this guy so sometimes we'll even get some that you can't see any of the banding on but these guys are even more purple than the first clutch that we had shot of course these are lavender snow California king snakes who doggy I'll tell you what these ones turned out amazing And this clutch of eggs we actually have here, we've got two, four, six, seven eggs to cut. This is kind of an interesting combination, right? Because uh, it's like two opposite ends of the spectrum. And the female is actually this beautiful flame ball python. And it was bred to this mahogany chocolate, which is gorgeous. Unfortunately, it's in shed, but it is a ripper. So you're basically taking like the flame, which is like a fireball python, this light enhancing gene, and you're adding a dark animal, which I think can be interesting. Sometimes the most interesting scenes come from that. So let's jump in and see if we get some beautiful magic here. First egg, here we go. I'm just imagining that a flame mahogany or a flame chocolate mahogany is gonna look really, really cool. And I don't know, I think we end up just getting a chocolate if I'm not mistaken on this one. Doesn't look like a mahogany, looks like a chocolate. Doesn't look like a fire or a flame. Although, you know, that's the problem. We don't know what that's gonna look like, right? So it could possibly be. It's, the more I look at it, the more I wonder if this is potentially the flame chocolate or the flame mahogany because it's got so much blushing in it. All right, this is gonna be interesting, guys. I'm gonna be cutting this clutch of eggs, not sure what I'm gonna be looking at. And until they actually hatch out, we may not really know what we have, but let's just jump into egg number two and see if there's something that jumps out and it's like, yeah, that's it, so let's go. There we go, number two. Again, it might be something that's really apparent or it might be something that is really subtle. Hmm, yeah, this one definitely isn't. This, I'll be totally honest with you guys, I think this might be a normal ball pine time. This doesn't look like a mahogany, doesn't look like a chocolate, doesn't look like a flame. So uh, we might have just whipped on everything on this one, but we still have a bunch of eggs to go, so let's just jump into it and go to egg number three. All right, here we go, come on. Again, I was expecting some really cool stuff. Whoa, wait a second here. Okay, so this is gonna throw a monkey wrench in everything, unfortunately. This is actually a spider ball python. Now, I kind of figured out what happened the other clutch when I produced some spiders and spinners is that we do have a mahogany spider. I have never bred that mahogany spider to anything, but what I think happened is early in the year when Mary was throwing males and females together, she threw the mahogany spider in with some of the mahogany stuff. Now, I wouldn't personally have wanted to do that, but that's okay. Now, I think that's why we're getting some mahogany spider stuff, which uh, kind of muddies the water up a little bit, but I'm pretty sure that's why we have a spider now so now we know there's a good chance that the mahogany spider was the dad that I didn't even know bred anything so let's just keep going and see if uh, we can unravel this mystery 
All right, we'll see. I mean, who knows? Now we could get a mahogany spider flame. Who knows? Another normal ball python. Gosh, what the heck? You shouldn't produce two normal ball pythons in this type of uh, a combination so we've got three eggs left to go i think we hit the flame mahogany or flame chocolate at least i think we hit one of them but uh we still have three eggs let's see what happens and that is uh the one little trick unfortunately when multiple people are breeding is that uh things can kind of happen okay so this is actually interesting this is definitely a mahogany spider and it's a really pretty one too don't get me wrong i don't mind the fact that we're getting mahogany spiders i just would like to know like the purity of what i'm trying to go with. this was a specific thing i was going for and the spider really muddles it up and that's just part of what happens let's move on two more eggs And the other thing is, is that we normally want to write down every male and female area together so that we have a really good understanding of what it is. And this is 100% either a chocolate flame or a chocolate mahogany or maybe even a flame mahogany chocolate. I'm not 100% sure. Regardless, this is what I was hoping. Look, wow, that is a cool snake. I think the first one was it too, but this, this one here is pretty darn awesome. It's got that cool striking that the flame brings to it. It's got the chocolate richness. This is gonna be a banger. This is what I was hoping to produce. So at least we hit one of what I wanted to produce. We got one more egg to go. That is awesome. I am so happy that we hit that one thing. Cause again, that's a building block animal. And what do we have here? Looks like we have another one. Looks like we actually hit three of those suckers in this egg. Definitely a flame, definitely a mahogany chocolate i'm not even 100 sure if it's mahogany or chocolate once they hatch out i'll know but it's that dark morph whether it's mahogany or chocolate and it's certainly the light in the flame so it's that kind of really interesting combination of things it's going to be cool again what i'm starting to think is when you start bringing them in again into potentially banana you start bringing them into pinstripe maybe into camel stuff whatever the case is this is going to be a really cool building block to kind of change the palette of future stuff so all in all a weird clutch some weird results but we did hit the things we wanted to hit down in the dungeon and that means egg time. Egg, time. egg time. Now, interestingly enough, guys, this gives me hope. Now, you guys know that I have possible hat sunsets. And the truth is, is most of these possible hats, they're possible hat to possible hat. They're you know probably never going to produce sunsets. But I will say that sunsets have a little bit of a visual hat to them, right? So hats will actually have this really big blushing right down the back. This is the only possible hat that I have that actually looks like a hat. 100% head. Now the problem with that is, to be totally honest with you, is she's also bred to a male that was a possible head that might not have that interest. So even if she turns out to be my head female, that she may or may not be, whoa! I tell you what, she almost got me there, guys. That was close. Come on, mama. I got one more egg to get her. So even if she turns out to be an actual head, the fact is the male might not be a head. So it's a little bit of a quandary I have, but I do have faith that this clutch has the best chance of producing a sunset this year. If it doesn't produce a sunset, like I said, I'll probably break down and just buy some sunset stuff from a couple of my friends or something like that. Regardless, we have two, four, six, eight, beautiful eggs from these girls and again i want to get back in that project maybe i'll get lucky i think this is the last clutch of the year that potentially could produce sunsets so hey maybe the last one is the one we've been waiting for today was an absolutely insane day so much going on this time of year is so much fun and how did you like that trick that i taught my girl dixie the rhino iguana i think it's really fun i i love all of our animals and we're doing so much with training as a matter of fact right here is a playlist that you can see of all the animals here at the reptarium if you so choose could you also do me another favor can you write up here subscribe to my checking in podcast channel each Wednesday we do a checking in and I think you guys are going to like some of the guests we have coming up on this side you can subscribe to this vlog channel please turn your post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow